Nin explains the UK laws on self-defense. So you're in the UK and you've just been arrested for either hitting somebody, bashing someone on the head with a wooden leg, or shot a leprechaun to death. And you want to know if you can use self-defense as a way to avoid prosecution. This video explains what the UK laws are regarding self-defense, and if you can even argue self-defense in a British court of law. Before I begin though, I'd just like to say that this video is for educational or entertainment purposes only, and is not a substitute for a legally licensed professional. If you are in trouble with the law, or you think you're in trouble, please hire a lawyer. So what is the law exactly? Without going to all the technicalities, the law here in the UK dictates that you may only use reasonable force to prevent danger or threat and any further harm or injury. You may use self-defense to defend yourself, someone else who is in danger, your property, prevention of a crime, or in a lawful arrest situation. Now notice the keywords in the description, because it's these keywords that will determine whether you escape prosecution or not. What is danger? Imminent danger generally refers to a threat to the safety of yourself, someone else, or your property. Whether you actually are in danger or not is irrelevant at this point. The key thing is you must believe that you are in imminent danger. If you ever admit that you didn't feel like you were in danger, you will most likely be prosecuted. Let's say that someone is brandishing a glass bottle in your general direction. You can defend yourself at this point if you believe that the glass bottle will cause you or someone else harm. If he's on the ground and you proceed to stamp him in the groin 17 times, this is not self-defense, as the danger has passed when the drunk fell to the floor. The prosecutor will always ask if you could have used a more peaceful resolution, such as running away, and if you ever say yes, you can't argue self-defense either. You can only argue self-defense if you genuinely believe that you had no other choice. Contrary to popular belief, you don't actually have to wait to be attacked first. You can issue a preemptive strike if you believe that it will avert danger to yourself or someone else you're defending. You must, however, always use reasonable force. Okay, so what's reasonable force? There is no legal definition of reasonable force, as it varies from case to case. But in general, it refers to the most proportionate and least harmful response to the danger in question. You also have to apply common sense to any case. For example, if someone tries to choke you to death and you poke him in the eye to get him off you, that is deemed to be a proportional response to the threat, and therefore would be grounds for self-defense. If someone calls you a popping jay and you go and poke him in the eye, this is not a proportionate response and you can't argue self-defense here. You are therefore guilty of assault. If a drunk tries to rip your clothes off and you knee him in the crotch, this would be reasonable. If a drunk tries to rip your clothes off and then you stab him 17 times, this would not be reasonable. In any trial, it will be up to the jury to determine what is reasonable and what is not given the circumstances, as you will always argue that what you did was reasonable. I just hit somebody with an object, can I argue self-defense? The answer is, it depends. When you start using objects to defend yourself, the odds tilt towards you being prosecuted, and here's why. In the UK, any object acquired for the sole intention to cause harm can be classed as an offensive weapon. Let's say you're in bed, and someone comes in and tries to rape you. You pick up the nearest thing you have, which happens to be a table lamp, and bash him over the head with it. You can argue in court that you did not buy that table lamp for the sole purpose of hitting a rapist over the head with. You bought the table lamp as a table lamp, and that you had no other choice but to defend yourself with it. This is good grounds for using an object in self-defense. If, however, you kept a baseball bat next to your bed, and the rapist comes in and you bashed him across the head with it, and you tell the prosecutor that you keep a bat next to your bed just in case someone breaks into your house, congratulations, you're going to prison. You've just admitted to buying an object for the sole intent of causing harm, and therefore it's now classed as an offensive weapon. The best response if you get asked this question is, I play baseball. I just shot a guy with a gun. Can I still argue self-defense? When guns are involved, you really tip the balance in favor of prosecution. In the UK, where gun laws are extremely strict, you generally have no good reason for having a gun in your possession in the first place, let alone using it to defend yourself. If you're not licensed to have that particular gun, or you used an illegal gun to shoot someone with, it's almost certainly prison for you. If you are licensed to have that gun, the prosecutor will ask you what you were doing with that gun when you used it in self-defense. There's only a handful of scenarios where you can escape prosecution here, and even then it's up to the jury to decide whether you lawfully used it to defend yourself or not. So to summarize, if you were defending yourself, someone else, your property or preventing a crime, and there was imminent danger, and there was no other peaceful resolution, and you used reasonable force, and if you used an object you didn't bite for the sole intent of causing harm, then you may just have grounds for arguing self-defense to avoid prosecution. Remember, this varies from case to case, and I strongly recommend that you consult a lawyer for your exact circumstances. 
I've seen thugs shoot someone dead and get away with it, and I've also seen grannies hitting robbers with handbags that got prosecuted for it. So always consult a legal professional. If you found this video at all helpful or entertaining, please like, comment, share and subscribe. It takes me ages to make one of these things and good karma is much appreciated. Remember, if you're in trouble with the law or you think you're in trouble, for the love of God, hire a lawyer.